It's all right. Can you make my hair look like this? Oh, man, what you want to make your hair look like that for? <laughs> See, that's the problem with y'all today. Y'all don't know nothing. Will you let the man tee you off? You yap worse than six barbers. <clears throat> Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Your Barber Podcast Show. I am your host, Matt Balot, a.k.a. Matty Blaze on Instagram. We're up to episode number 37 now on the Your Barber Podcast. Uh, I appreciate all the love and support up to this point. If you haven't subscribed to the show, do me a favor, look down, click on that subscribe button. Appreciate that. So uh, I got a special guest today. He is formerly known as King Cutta. So if, that, if that's an indicator that we're in our bag today, right? <laughs> so we got our first guest coming from the Lone Star State in Hearst, Texas. Cutter Concepts. <laughs> His name is Lasana Thurley, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Yeah, man. Welcome to the Your Barber Podcast show, Lasana. How's your day going today, my man? Good. Going well, man. Going well, bro. I'm blessed to be here, bro. Sorry I bombed on that intro a little bit. Cutter Concepts. Yes, sir. (laughs) I'll probably edit that up. (laughs) Yeah, bro. Cutter Concepts. Cutter Concepts. So real quick, how did that kind come about, Cutter Concepts? Yeah, so uh, like you said earlier, it used to be King Cutter. Right. Yes. When I first got in barbering, it was King Cutter, man. Uh, that was just a name that always kind of rang to me, kind of always sounded smooth to me. As I progressed in the barber world, you know, I started to learn different things, be exposed really not to the barber game, but to the barber industry. I learned a few things. I did a rebrand because I wanted my clients, my customers to see me in a different light. So I rebranded to a uh, Cutter Concepts. And, uh, the cutter name still remains, but the concept is our way of barbering is a different concept of barbering. It's a unique concept of barbering. So you just froze for a second, and now you're back. You're good. Whoa, you froze for a second too. I'm like, <laughs> hey, bro, I was talking. Then you just looking at me. I'm like, dang, am I not talking good? Am I tripping? That's what so I, I thought. said. The whole spill, and I started talking slower, like I ain't getting no head nods or nothing. <laughs> Then I stopped you like this. <laughs> oh, wow, That's crap. what you were doing. Long long like, me, bro. You frozen? <laughs> so the way I was introduced to Lasana, he was on the Elevator Barbers podcast. Shout out to Bradford and Delmar. Poached another guest <laughs> from their podcast. Um, sure. You know, I think you were talking about you were in a class, like um, you were educating yourself and you were mm-hmm. kind of coming up with the rebranding there. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, so you kind of got a little more professional with it, right? Kind of coming from a different perspective and want to attack it a different way. Never yeah. a bad thing at all, man. A hundred percent, man. So yeah, I, I came across your page after discovering you through their podcast. And I, I just like the content's hilarious, dude. You're really uh, creative with it. And, yeah. uh, and the message is like worthwhile as well. So, I mean, that, that's important as well. Um, I think I saw that, one <laughs> the other day. It was like, like clean your mirrors that you hand to your clients. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is a big one because like I'm really <laughs> cognizant of it. And sometimes I'll hand my client like a dusty mirror. I'm Bro. like, I let them know, right? I'm like, man, I got to clean this mirror. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, Rod, do the same exact thing, bro. And then I, I, you know, I'm running behind or something and I put it back and never clean it. <laughs> then, 100%. I say it again to the next guy. I'm like, man, I got really clean this mirror. <laughs> yeah, bro. It builds up after some time, man. Absolutely, man. It does. So, so I got like an opening segment. It's called Just an Observation. Kind of, uh, so I always want to get the guest's take on things with uh, what the observation is. But today, touching a little bit on anxiety right you you ever you ever feel anxious kind of coming into work you know what i mean you got a huge day ahead it's saturday morning you're kind of just like still wiping the cold out of your eyes sometimes you're like all right let me get let me uh make sure i perform today right right in a way i feel like a performer 
because not only are we providing a good service, we're, you know, we're trying to be prompt and on schedule. We're trying to maintain an appearance and we're trying to put out the best work we possibly can in the time we allotted. You right. know, we also have to form that connection. And I'm always trying to get my clients to laugh and stuff. So like it's it's like you're a comedian on the side. Man, bro. <laughs> the other side. And it's just like <laughs> real, bro. There's a lot of pressure when you got a full book coming into the day and you're just therapist. <laughs> Yeah, therapist, exactly. You try to be there for them in any way possible and put a smile on their face when when they leave. And so you ever kind of get an anxiety of just like a kind of a performer's anxiety? 100%, bro. You? 100%, man. Man, bro, every time I look on my booking app and I see a new, a new customer has booked an appointment, a yeah. name I've never seen before, yeah, bro, I get some <laughs> – I feel that same anxiety. Cause I'm like, like oh, okay, man, what's this guy getting? What's he doing? Bro. Did he book the right thing? That's right. an anxiety too. The whole sometimes, thing, bro. Yeah, sometimes the services can kind of get like. So at my shop, we have a regular haircut and a signature haircut, and the mm -hmm. signature haircut's always the like the skin fades, the faux hawks, anything that really goes down the skin or is a little more difficult. And you know, there, there's so many clients, you know, sometimes they play dumb and they book the regular, which is Whoa. less time. And they're just like, oh, I didn't know. So I can't get a zero. <laughs> You're just like, All right, trying to add on and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I usually tell them, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'll do it this time. You're not getting a shaver <laughs> or, oh, you really? know, depending on what it looks like, I'll be like, we'll do a half. So just to teach them. So like right. you ever for feel sure. like an athlete almost like kind of it's, it's just like you got to perform the crowds out there <laughs> and you're about to go out on the stage, especially when there's other barbers out there on the floor. <laughs> right. There's other yeah. barbers that are performing too. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you want to be, you know, you don't want to look ridiculous in front of your, your barber brethren there either. Right. Yeah. Hey, you know what the worst, I think one of the worst anxieties is, is and i'm sure we all felt it in the in the beginning whether it was barber school or you were new at a barber shop yeah is when you're brand new and you're doing your first few cuts in there and yeah. you got three or four other barbers in there and you just you can just kind of feel them looking at you oh yeah they probably not looking at you but you can just feel their energy and you're yeah. just trying trying to get you know get that cut right i think that's one of the worst especially if you're starting to take too long and it's still not like done the way you want it to be done. And you're like, right. I got to send them out. And they're about to look at the back of his head. Oh, you already know. <laughs> they don't look for lines and everything. Don't let there be a line. Don't let the, don't let the sun shine on that head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, he was looking down. You got to put him up. Like, <laughs> right. Right. For real. Hey, walk quick. Walk quick at the door. <laughs> yeah. One of my uh, prior guests. They did a thing with new barbers that like it was kind of like the test. Like <laughs> when they send out a haircut, they go like ah! <laughs> and do that. And I'm like, oh man. Yeah. It's gotta be painful as a new guy with the with the nervousness and everything. But bro, that hurts. Like I'd like to say that I don't get nervous now, but of course I do. Like it's usually that first cut of the day, right? Like oh, I get boy. drip of sweat down my back, maybe. <laughs> then, rip like, of I felt that sweat before. Yeah. Like dead center. Bloop. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like, all right, let me, all right. Let me get this guy out of here, and oh, then I can do my thing now. <laughs> right. Back. I just had a full facial shave. My last client of the day. I would much rather have that full facial shave the last client of the day, and not the first client of the day. A hundred percent. Because you know it could be I was on the phone, some stuff went down, and I'm like, you know. Head's not in the right place. Like a lot of things happen before you get into the shop. The traffic. Bro. Today, dude, we had a. So, have you, are you familiar with this Cop City thing in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been hearing about it. I yes. know it's hot as fire in Atlanta right now. Yeah. So, yeah, they're building a police training area and with the defund the police stuff. And there's a lot of people, there's a lot of reasoning, a lot of factors behind why people are upset for sure. But uh, today, so the contractor that's building that facility is also building a high rise luxury apartment directly in front of our barbershop. Right. Mm. And so 
I get a text this morning, like eight 30 saying, Hey, they're protesting out front on Juniper in front of the shop. Um, it's kind of hard to get, get into the shop because they're right. the caution tape and stuff out and everything. So I was, uh, you know, the shops in between 12th and 11th street. Right. And so you can get into the garage on both sides. Mm-hmm. So I passed 11th and I'm trying to go down 12th. They got it blocked. They got like tanks. <laughs> they had like bro, crazy stuff. The, they had like, that's wild. They had like bro. massive Humvees. I'm like, is this necessary? Like, what are, what are they hum, doing? What they need Humvees for? Come on, man. <laughs> well, I guess the guy chained himself to the elevator to the building oh. that's like exposed or like the crane or something chained itself to it. So that's kind of, I guess why they brought the cavalry, but, uh, yeah, so I get I had to do a UE in the middle of the city and go down 11th, get in the garage. And I'm walking out, and I saw my coworker, one of my couple coworkers that work with me on Monday. Um, I see he was sitting in his car still, and I got out and I like put the caution tape up and went under it. I all of a sudden I just hear, Hey, <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> What? There's a cop, and he's oh. just like, You can't go here. I was like, I work here. I, 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 you know, it's Monday morning. I got to go to work. Right. <laughs> and, Monday. Come on, bro. Yeah, Monday. Yeah. He's like, oh, you're in the barbershop? I was like, yeah. And uh, there's about to be some clients coming that need to get through, too. He's like, well, you need an escort to get there. I'm like, oh, I didn't. I didn't know. Sorry. Then there was another guy, my coworker behind me. They're like, hey. <laughs> and I'm like, he's my coworker. <laughs> yeah, he's going to work, too. Yeah, so yeah, that was a bit of a crazy start to the day until like eleven o'clock or so. Then they got and while I was leaving work today, then all the news cameras for the five o'clock news were out there. <laughs> Man, bro, they bug wild. Yeah. Live on the scene, you can see behind me here was an elevator with a gentleman strapped to it. <laughs> bro, you got that uh news anchor voice down pat, bro. <laughs> yeah, this... you got it down pat. Yeah, the, the they're out there, man. I was trying to like duck under cameras as I was leaving. Yeah. <laughs> so, How long were they out there? It, was, it seemed like it was from like 8 a.m. to 11 or so. Yeah, man. Nah, that's whack, man. So you're from Hearst, Texas, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where is Hearst? I'm not. Her- yeah, Hearst. So I'm in a DFW area. You got Dallas, Hearst. I mean, you got Dallas and Fort Worth. You, then you got the mid cities area. That's everything in between. So I'm in the mid cities area. Okay, so you're kind of smack dab in between all that. All yeah, right. for sure. I'm right in between Dallas and Fort Worth. That's that's nice. where my shop is at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. I've driven through Texas a bunch because I lived in Arizona for for a few years. That's where I got my barber license and everything. And yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved. So we drove, you know, old route 66, like through <laughs> with a moving truck twice. <laughs> Ooh, bro. From yeah. Arizona to to Atlanta. So it was from West Virginia to Arizona. Then it was Arizona to Pennsylvania. <laughs> and then bro. the most recent moves PA down to GA. I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah. I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> wow, That's definitely what it seems like. Yeah, but so, yeah, I, I've always been intrigued by Texas, though. I've always wanted to like visit more than just the airport or driving through, and I never really oh, yeah. got a chance, man. So you got to come yeah. visit, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I, I feel like everyone's got a big house and a pool. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm flying over the airport. I'm just like, man, it looks nice down there. <laughs> a lot of space out here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what that's what intrigued me because like Arizona is kind of similar. You just see for miles and like it's a whole different world out there, man. I love Arizona, bro. Yeah. You I like, love it. You, ever, you ever visit? Yeah. Well, I, I went, I visit I visited Arizona when I was like 12, 13. Okay. My sister used to live out there. You know, I had her, my uh my nephews yeah. out there, my nieces out there, and I went over there for a summer. What part? And uh huh? What part of it? Surprise, Arizona. Surprise, yeah, I've heard surprise. Yeah, surprise, Arizona, man. So we was there for the whole summer, man. Had a whole lot of fun. It's a lot of space over there, and the scenery is dope. Like I fell in love with the scenery. I'm sure even just like surprise has like changed a lot in the last decade or so. Really? Yeah, it's had to. Like I mean, just like in I was in Tempe, where like Arizona State is. Because that's that's what brought me out there. My wife got her PhD out there. She's a Spanish professor. 
Nice, nice. So she, uh, yeah, she uprooted us a few times. <laughs> oh man, I bet. But uh, we're done. We're done moving now. But uh, it was good. But yeah, man, it was. Uh, they they were telling me because while I was in school, I drove for Lyft a little bit while I was in barber school, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you kind of get to know the area and get to know people. But most people, it's a melting pot. A lot of people aren't from there. And uh, you realize that mm-hmm. people are there. They're just like, I mean, this place has changed a ton in the last 10 years. I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Just right. the amount of time. I mean, the amount of time we've been gone from there, I bet there's like, you know, just like everywhere, just luxury apartments going up left and right. And they probably um, can't even fill them. <laughs> man, what's that spot in Arizona they say is real nice? Not Scottsdale. It's. There's Scottsdale. Damn. There's uh Scottsdale seems to be what I think you're thinking about. It might be Scottsdale. What are some other cities around there? There's Scottsdale, there's Tempe, there's Chandler, there's Gilbert, there's um I'm trying to think more on the west side. There's Glendale. That's where like the Cardinal Stadium is. Okay. It's like way away from everything else for some reason. Right. It's um dang. it probably is like Scottsdale. Paradise City or Paradise Valley. Um Mesa, that's where okay. I went to barber school. But yeah, I think okay. I think you're thinking of the right thing, Scottsdale. That's where yeah, that it's like supposed to be like real nice out there. Yeah, the property value goes up. There's like you know Maserati dealerships and shit, <laughs> shit everywhere. Man, bro. Yeah, man, they got that uh waste management golf thing. That's yeah, all. that's what I heard about that. A lot of yeah. uh golf uh golf courses out there. Yeah, that's like a huge party. It's 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 like a complete shit show. That that thing, I tried to like when I was driving for Lyft. I tried to drive some people up there, and I'm like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Man, is it what like real crowd? A lot of stuff going on. I mean, you can't even like get through to anything, and then you got to find your one person in this sea of thousands of people. Oh, heck so, no, bro. Yeah, Fresh that definitely not worth it. And then everyone's like hammered leaving, so you got to slam on your brakes like ten times to leave. It's, it's not. Oh yeah. So you burning gas just coming through there. Yeah, exactly. Gas and brake. And that's why I had a hybrid too. <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. Smart man. So yeah, man. Yeah, Texas though. Like the only thing I feel like I know about Texas is like UGK. That's like, <laughs> that's bro, like you got to come down to Texas, bro. You got to right. come, you know, D- Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston. So I'm originally from Houston. So Okay. Yeah, you know, DFW like my second home, but you know, DFW, Houston, any of those states, uh, Austin, they say when you're in Austin, it don't even feel like Texas. You know, they say Austin is like its own, its own, you know, piece of land out there, own city. It's got to be crazy, too. Everyone moved out there from from Cali and just from all around, I'm sure, man. It's so packed out here, it's crazy. Yeah, I bet, man. Yeah. So let's let's get into your background a little bit, man. That's that's kind of the whole point of this thing. Where um where were you born? Number one. So I was born in Houston, Texas, man. Uh, LB, was- LBJ Hospital. Yeah. LBJ Hospital, H Town. Yeah. Okay. November seventh, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Nice. Man. Yes, sir. Nineteen. So wait, how old are you? I'm tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Hey, bro, I said that with boldness too, huh? 1991, bro. I'm 32. I'm 33. So okay, right there with you, man. 90s, 90s kid. Yeah, 100, so, man. So we grew up with a lot of the same stuff, man. I'm trying to make oh, some yeah. references along the way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, so you grew up in H Town. What was kind of what, what were you went to growing up? What kind of what so, was your upbringing like? So, born in Houston, um. Was in Houston, toddler years, but we moved to a uh, Hockley, Texas. That's like an hour northwest of Houston. Okay, close to like Prairie View and Brenham and Tomball, small yeah. country area over there. And, why do you uh, think you moved from there? Why? Yeah. Okay, so my dad, man, he was a he was a he was an educator okay. at Prairie View A and M University. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he was an educator, and we lived in a in a small neighborhood about twenty minutes from Prairie View in Hockley. Okay. So, yeah, we moved. Yeah, so we moved out there when I was young, and to me, my sisters, my mom. I come from a big family, so how many, how many siblings did you have? So I got eight sisters, and uh, eight. 
Yeah, bro. Whoa. You're the only boy in the whole bunch? So I got eight sisters. I have a brother. I have a brother in uh he's in Atlanta, matter of fact. Oh no way. He's living in Scottsdale. And I got other siblings in uh in Africa, in Liberia. That's where my family's from. Oh no way. So yeah, yeah I was hearing a little bit on the podcast about your dad educating there too and going back and always always teaching everyone. Cause he he didn't come from a super educated background, right? Nah, not at all. So not he always all, liked man. to come back and give that give that back to everyone. Mm-hmm. Beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. Hundred percent, man. So I mean, growing up with that many siblings, though, like in the same house. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna have to break my family dynamic down. Okay. You know, because cool. it's crazy. So I come from a West African background. So my dad, you remember that song, Papa was a rolling stone. Yeah. Uh, uh. So that was the case. But I mean, he took care of all his kids, you know, mm-hmm. but I had eight sisters and uh, we lived in one neighborhood with my four, with my three sisters from my mom mm-hmm. and uh, my other sisters, they live like three, like three streets over in the same okay. neighborhood. That's not bad, though. I mean, you, you got your half siblings very nearby, so I mean, everyone yeah. kind of stay close. I have a couple half siblings, so I, I'm an yeah. only child from from the one marriage, but like I have a couple half siblings, and it's tough to really just you know be close, especially if there's like an age gap, right? Yeah, and it was an age gap. Yeah, so that's I mean, that's good that they were nearby. I'm sure you guys were always kind of intermingled. Uh, and, it was always in the mix, bro. Yeah, always in the mix. And I'm the youngest out of everybody. Out of all my dad's kids, I'm the youngest. So so it had to be kind of hard to stand out too, right? Or was it? it mm, honestly. The youngest can kind of get held up a little bit too. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was definitely hard in the morning time, man, trying to use the restroom. Oh, yeah. I got to let this sister go in, that sister go in. They got to do their hair. I got to wait. I got to wake. I used to have to wake up real early just to go to the restroom. Way down the totem pole. <laughs> Way down the totem pole. And as I got older, <laughs> I'll try to get ready for <clears throat> ready for school. And I'll try to use my brush. I got hair all up in my brush. You know, from them using my stuff. So yeah. <laughs> it was definitely challenging coming up, man. But it was fun. A lot of sharing things. A lot of sharing. So that, sharing. So I kind of hopped through questions through your background a little bit. So you're kind of talking about your kind of your morning routine. What's your morning routine? Like walk me through a typical day that you got to work. So like from the very sunrise, how how you get down, man. So I'm like right now to this this day? Like this day? say you had to work yesterday. What, how would that day go? Like a normal day. Okay. Well, so I start my weeks on Wednesdays. Okay, so when uh, you... let's see. I'm at work at ten o'clock. I work from ten to seven. Sometimes maybe seven thirty, eight o'clock. But what what about before that? I'm talking about like get out of bed. Then what's next? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So man, I get out of bed. Uh, let's see. Let me think about this. Because I know you I mean, got I kids, it's pretty... so it's, it's it's a lot that happens before you get to work. I'm sure. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so uh, my wife, she works from home. Okay. So my and I have a two year old son. My the, son, he trenches. wakes up. Huh? <laughs> you're in the trenches right now. I'm in a trench, and my wife pregnant right now. Oh man. Baby, baby, doing May. In May, okay. Yeah, May. You got a little bit longer, but that's coming quick. <laughs> bro, I, was going, I was about to go down, bro. So, yeah. So, my son, my wife works from home. My son, he wakes up at like seven, seven thirty on the dot every single morning. Like that's work. what time I get up. My daughter, seven thirty. Yeah, bro. So my wife, she's up, you know, showering, getting ready uh, before I have to get ready. So she'll do her thing, come lay down for a minute, and um, she'll let me get up and get dressed. You right. know, so I, so I shower, I do my thing. And um, while I'm doing that, we switch again so she can go get in the office and uh, start her day. So yeah. she does that until eight thirty. Um, I'm usually getting my son ready for uh for breakfast, making him breakfast, brushing well, brushing his teeth, making him breakfast, and getting him started. Around eight thirty comes around. That's when she comes out into the living room and uh, she takes control of everything. 
while I finish up uh, getting ready for work. So once I finish Three swaps up, I, that happen. Huh? Three swaps. Oh, bro, we swapping. Just the yeah. coordination, teamwork. I mean, that's, bro, that's, that, that's what marriage taught me, though, man. Commendable. Yeah, teamwork, collaboration, communication. So 100%. So once we swap for that third time, I get ready. Once nine o'clock hits, I like to be out the door by nine o'clock. Uh, I stay about 35 minutes away from the shop. So okay. I used to I stay eight. Challenges. Yeah, bro. So I got to hit three highways uh, to get to the shop. Wow. So we're kind of like in a, it's kind of, it used to be real country out here. So now they're developing a little bit. So yeah. I leave around nine. Get through traffic. I might go uh, grab me a coffee or something like that from 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 McDonald's, and um, I make it to the shop around nine thirty five, nine forty at the latest. Okay. And um, I like to just kind of get get a head start on my day at work. I got SOPs and stuff, so I got certain ways that I like to open the shop, prep for the morning, just so everything can be consistent for my client, and just so I can be. What do you ready. mean by SOPs? Explain that. Just standard operating okay. procedures, you know. Okay. For the list, yeah. Yeah, so procedures that I do just to open up the shop yeah. every single day the same day, get the music going, set the atmosphere, get my hot towels ready, and exactly. um, go ahead and start. Yeah. So speaking of the shop, what um kind of how's it rock? Are you you're in a studio, right? So I call it a studio because it's, it's a small, intimate setting. You know, okay. it's three booths. Okay. Three stations. Three stations. I mean, that's plenty of space if you can fit three in there, right? Yeah, yeah, it works, man. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Enough it works. to get three in there. So, yeah. so you're the so you're the owner. What's kind of the whole situation there? Yeah, so I'm the owner there. Um, I've been over for about two years, a little right. over two years. I kind of log, I kind of log it by my son's age. He's two, and I opened up the same week he was born. So, wow. yeah, that was, man, that was some crazy stuff within itself. Like, it was tough, you know, that first year, you yeah, know, really first year on. in 10 months, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah. I remember my daughter was born when I graduated uh, barber school. So she's five now. So that, that's kind of my barometer. <laughs> oh. Five years into the game. Oh, that's tough, too, bro. Oh, that's yeah. Tough too. So barber school in general is tough. Then, yeah. then work, kids, relationship. Yeah. Plus, it's it was like 120 degrees. <laughs> nah, it was like it was October. It was probably like 105 by then. 105 <laughs> in October in Arizona, Lord. Yeah. That's fall time. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah, bro. brother. Let's continue through your story, though. Kind of what your upbringing was like. You had the sisters, the morning routine, getting to school, and everything. Um. That what were you kind of into growing up? Like, what was kind of your your jam? Man, so definitely had a jam, man. Just reversing a little bit. My father wound up passing away when I was seven. Oh, like, seven? Oh, man. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was seven. Oh, so man. I last seen him when I was five, and he passed when I was seven. Wow. Um, in a tragic car accident in Liberia. Um, about, I believe, three or four people passed in that, in that accident. Yeah, Man. including my father. Um, my That's mother, she was she was in a um, she was in a car accident also, and uh, she was in a coma for some time. Oh my good. there I, or that happened in the states? This happened in Liberia. Liberia as well. Man. Yeah, this all happened in Liberia. Uh, my dad was older. He was what 60, 65, 66 at the time. That's how old my dad was when he passed. Sixty six. Oh, yeah. That hey man, we got some things in common, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, hundred percent. So he wound up passing when I was seven, and uh, in the midst of that time, where my mom and my dad went back to Liberia for a little while, I went to go stay with my older sisters. You know, my older half sisters, okay. and um, we're all living with them. And uh, we got the news, got the phone call early in the morning, and uh, mm. that's when everything really flipped for us. You know. Absolutely. But your your mother's your mother's okay now, right? Yeah, my mother's just fine, man. Uh she's in Houston right now and um she's uh man, mama doing well. 
Beautiful. Mom be doing well. She's healthy. You know, it would have been tough, like two to go like that, man. It's not. Yeah, not yeah. Easy. I thank God for that every day, man. That it, it didn't happen like that. You know, so right. there's a testimony in everything, in the good and in the bad stuff. So, gotcha. So that's yeah. definitely part that something that molds you. You know, it kind of has something deep down that kind of maybe pushes you, or you know. I mean, it can lead to a lot of things. I mean, you might want to distract yourself from it a little bit instead of take it on full. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a whole lot going on in the brain at that age and especially moving forward. And then looking back too, like last year, I had a tough year thinking about my dad because I kind of got through everything, the move here and we're doing super well in the, in the city. And it's, yeah. It's kind of like, man, he never got to see any of that journey. Didn't we get to meet my daughter. Like it was just, it just kind of all came crashing down on me. Especially when my wife brought up all of his stuff from the basement. Wow. Like he had a guitar and like put like an old picture of. I'm like, you, why are you bringing this shit upstairs? <laughs> right, right. You trying, you trying to over overcome overcome some things <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. I come home from work one day. I'm like, yeah, it was a good day. What is that guitar doing sitting there? Why does it smell like my dad up here? Yeah, <laughs> stuff yeah. like that. Why do I feel presence? <laughs> yeah, those are yeah. triggers, man. So yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's a lot early on at that age. So what um did that kind of catapult you forward, or did you you kind of still too young to really grasp? So, all of it? so I'll tell you, I'll tell you a brief story about just how everything happened and like how how I felt. So yeah, bro, I was asleep. You know, I was sleeping, man, and um, it felt like I heard, it sounded like I heard some laughing in the other room. Yeah. Like a whole lot of people down there laughing, mm -hmm. but it just kept on going on. I woke up, and I just followed the sounds, and it, it led me into my sister's room, my older sister, Cora. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a hairdresser, too, by the way. But. Nice. When I walked into her room, you know, everybody was in there, bro. Uh, my older sister, Cora, her husband, bro, Henry. Um, then all my other sisters were in there, all sitting on the bed. And one thing about our culture, man, we, we, we mourn death hard. Mm. So when I walked in, I quickly realized it wasn't laughing. It was crying. Yeah. Hysterical crying, man. It's, Bro, you took the words right out of my mouth, man. Mm. It was hysterical crying. And, um, you know, I walked in and they acknowledged me. And my older sister, she said, uh, we Liberian. Papa Nadao, you know, Papa Nadao, my papa. So that's, you know, yeah. she said, our father died. He's mm. dead. The old man is dead. He was 66, 65, you know. Super young, really. Yeah, bro. Super young. Like, my dad, he was still active, you know, still well. Um, You know, still, you know, he had his energy. And yeah. um, at that age, it seems like a superhero going down. I mean, bro, it's it like, was, this person can't die. Like, come on, come on, man. Yeah. He, like, my father was a leader in a community, mm -hmm. in a family, um, in the city. Like, still to this day, bro, when I go to Houston, when I go to Hockley or Prairie View, they still make remarks about my father. Yeah, man. And um, he's actually buried on a college campus in Liberia right now. Oh, you because know? of his educator. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of why, you know, I got Very those respected. strings for education. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because you're kind of get, getting into that a little more now. Which we'll yeah. which we'll get into shortly. Yeah. I but understand. so what? So hair was in your life, you said, right? So is that what kind of rubbed off on you a little bit? Were you in the mix? Were you kind of you didn't want to do it, or? Well, it definitely rubbed off on me. Um. So out of my eight sisters, four of them are cosmetologists. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I got a sister, uh, Fatu. She's been doing hair since. I can remember, you know, on the north on the northwest side of Houston. My sister, she had cars. She had her own crib, you know, at a young age. So Cosmo kills it, man. They, they bro, crush it. On fire. You know, yeah. especially in the hood. You know, she was in the hood. So 
Right. It's like clockwork, man. It's a star. <laughs> yeah, bro, for real. So I remember we used to be at her salon sometimes or at the salon she worked at, and she'll send us across the street to go get her some M&Ms. Mm. Run across the street, go to the corner store, bring back some M&Ms. You know, just little running little errands and stuff. And uh, but yeah, that was Sister Fatu. My other sister, Cora, that you know, who I walked into her room, mm. that's my oldest sister, and um, she's been a barbershop owner. Um, she's been doing hair for the longest. Like, I used to wake up in the morning and see her doing braids in the living room, got hair all over the, all over the couch on the arm, yeah. on, the, on the you know, on the back of the couch, right? So, I was always around it. So, she was old enough to kind of seem like almost like a parent figure right she was so she was really influential to you yeah she was she was okay. did yeah. she kind of try to show you the ropes ever or did she man uh, i picked up the she encouraging I, well so so i kind of picked it up on my own i developed my own love for barbering after my mom came back from liberia after my father passed we relocated so when my father passed we we're in dfw mm -hmm. we went to go live with my sisters in the dfw so when my mom came back after like two plus years, we relocated back to Houston. Well, right outside of Houston to Katy. Okay. To Katy, right outside of Houston. We used to go to different barber shops so I can, you know, uh, so I can get a haircut. We went to all through the city for different barber shops. And I used to watch the barbers cut hair. I think I said on last podcast, it looked like magic to me. I tell this to everybody. It looked like magic. How they put the line in and fade it out. Yeah. People come in looking crazy and leave looking brand new. It is magic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's then I enjoy the shop atmosphere. You know, I got number sisters. I got a lot of sisters. So being yeah. in a male dominated atmosphere, the conversation, the laughs, you know, I'm young. They talking about girls and stuff. Yeah. So I enjoy that kind of stuff. And that's uh, good to get that male energy a little bit. That's it's important. Yeah, bro. hundred percent, especially for a young kid, bro. Yeah. yeah. So I just kind of fell in love with it, you know, from that aspect. Did you ever uh, tell your barber? Did you ever go back to your old barber from that time and be like, hey, I'm a barber now? Or you ever talk to him anymore? You know what? I seen him on, I seen him on Instagram like years later. Yeah. I seen, because I had a couple barbers, but I seen Mike. I seen him on Instagram like years later and I was able yeah. to, I ain't even mean to see him. I was just scrolling through, you know, just some yeah. stuff, and I seen him, and I did DM him, and I said, "Bro, I appreciate you for everything you did." And uh, yeah. I'm a barber now in the DFW area. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah. We was able to reconnect. Was he cool and everything? Was he? Was he like, man, you should have got out when you could? <laughs> oh no, nah, he was cool. He was cool. He re he remembered me and everything. That's awesome. You know, man. It feels yeah, good. You remember me and everything. It's Mike like a cool. god figure almost. Like, it's like, man, this guy is the magician. He's me, he's creating this magic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was Mike. I had Mike and I had Courtney and I had Sean. Those were my okay. three barbers growing up. We met Sean, then we met Mike, then we met Courtney. And uh, nice. those were my three barbers. There's a reason why you see barbers cut into their 80s. You know, ideally, we wouldn't like to do that, but like, it's, some of some people, some barbers are still happy cutting that old, right? Yeah, they is. So, what do you think makes a barber happy, Lasana, to stay put, especially in the situation they're in? Sure, I know it probably depends on, you know, the barber's point of view. It depends on the person, what their goals are, and everything. But like, yeah, yeah. say you got a barber fresh out of school, and you want to keep them for at least five years. Like, what do you think you would have to do to keep them happy? Um, I probably wouldn't touch on keeping them happy first. I'll probably touch on, you know, kind of like a mind shift type thing. Yeah. And really teaching him and showing him what barbering really is. Yeah. Molding their mind. Say it again. Molding their mind, right? That yeah, would have bro. to be. Like molding their mind, man, and just helping them to shape their vision. Like, it's not a hustle. It's not a side yeah. job. Like it's something that can really benefit your family and something that you can really have a career with, grow with. It can afford you a lifestyle and uh, it can pave the way for you. So I really invest into their mind, into their mindset and influence yeah. them, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll be my go-to influencer. Yeah, keep them motivated and hungry too. It's yeah. just like because I mean, I'm sure that you know you're telling them it's like, man, I, I know you can burn through a thousand haircuts in a day right now, but like that's it's not always going to be the case, and you kind of want to like zero in on certain things and you know it's always about the saddest it's always about the fulfillment for me right for sure. it's not always about the money you know I, I i get to be my authentic self i get to make people smile when they leave i mean that's what it's all about i mean making people happy every day never gets old to me so like there's no like Man. burning out if you're making people happy in my book mm -hmm. and you know if you are burning out, then you have to make an adjustment to not do that. And Talk about it. Yeah, man. You, you just got to you gotta stay fulfilled because once you stop feeling fulfilled and it seems like a nine to five or something you dread, you know, th like I spoke earlier, there's a reason why I'm nervous, right? Because I care about it, right? Mm -hmm. If you didn't get nervous, sometimes you don't care as much, right? That's fact. Yeah. Well, you be talking, bro. <laughs> yeah, because if you ain't nervous, you really don't care. Right. And if I'm not nervous or I'm not don't have any anxiety, then I distracted myself in some type of way. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm watching right. a comedian's podcast on the way to work. I'm, right. <laughs> I'm laughing right. or jamming the music or something, right? Right. So and it's not a weakness either. It's no. not a weakness to be anxious at all. It just makes you human. It makes you real. Absolutely. And that's yeah. another thing I want to talk about. You kind of transitioned right into it. Like mm -hmm. we're doing this thing right now because we got our we kind of cemented our management right now in our shop. We kind of had a bad split and now mm. we're kind of on the other side of everything now and um, just kind of continuing to progress forward. And uh, so we have assistants and things in our shops, in our shop that sweep hair, answer the phones and things and wow. do the laundry. And, and um, we want the continuity to all be there. So we filled out like a kind of a questionnaire for everyone sent a link to everyone to fill out. And one of the things was like, what do you think your strengths and weaknesses are? That's good. And I'm thinking, I'm like, <laughs> I was joking in the back with a GM. She's like, Matt, thank you for, thank you for sending in your uh, questionnaire. Cause some people haven't yet. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I saw weaknesses on there and I said, none. none. <laughs> <laughs> that don't apply to me. Yeah. No, she said, no, I like what you put down for your weaknesses and stuff. But uh, yeah, man, it's just like, why are people afraid to say they have a weakness? Like, Come that's on, a bad bro. thing. Like, bro, I'll be the first. I'll be the first one to say I got some weakness. Yeah, some man. weaknesses, bro. And what, what sometimes would you say, I say, what would you say a weakness is? For me personally? Yeah. Man, so I would say, so I got a weakness of like, so I have different services in the shop. Yeah. And one thing I still struggle with from time to time is sometimes I don't want to come off as feeling salesy and yeah. I'm trying to sell a service to somebody. Mm -hmm. So I just won't say nothing. I won't just bring it up. You know, you I just bring it up. It. Huh? You won't even bring it up? Nah, bro. I just do the regular basic haircut with you know, without doing any upsell. So I'm like, bro, you know, and let me just do this haircut what you what you book for. You know, just because I, like I sometimes have anxiety like that, huh? Like if you're trying to sell a product to a client, um, I think products are a little bit more easier for me to sell just because I so I have products that kind of cater to my clientele. So yeah. I have you know, curl mousse, I have moisturizer, stuff yeah. that I know they legit need, like right now, and, right. you know. so yeah, That's sometimes kind of I'm like, you me. know, if you don't want this, there's something on Amazon. Like, <laughs> I try, right, to, right. try not to come off too salesy. That's why you, you struck a nerve with me because that's that was my last full time job, selling Salesman. insurance at Allstate, and Man. I was the least happy I was in my life. I tell a story. I threw a pizza at a wall, arguing with my wife, my future wife. Yeah, and the shit slid down the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the type of stress I was under at this job because right. I right. come home every day and I would just like, we would argue more than ever. And it was just terrible yeah. because I was not being me all day. I'm like, this isn't me. Right. To right. Come off as this, like, you know, it's like, well, I've had state farm for years. And it was like, well, odds are, sir, you've been overpaying for years. So let's get a little quote going here. Like I wasn't yeah. bad at it, but like, I just, 
It wasn't well, you. Filled. Yeah, it wasn't hey, bro, me. I had a sales job too, bro. I had door to door sales. So. Oh man. I tried so, that for like a week. I'm like 22 years old, bro. And that was, I lasted about six months. I mean, that's a pretty long time to last doing that kind of stuff, dude. That's man. tough. Yeah, bro. It was. But it yeah, was. I mean, back to failures. Like, I mean, why, why do people just kind of come off as just like, like barbers, especially? Like, it's another way to connect with your client. You know yeah. what I mean? It's another way to be authentic. You can yeah. tell your client, like I got a review one time and it was someone that had like Jesus Christ hair and I'm not a Jesus Christ hair specialist. Yeah, type of, type of barber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not that type of barber, right? He wants a layered cut. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I told him. I'm like, you know, dude, I, I can cut this. I can make it look good. I can do some certain things to get to that point, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a guy who's giving you layers you know, all these different things that you, yeah. you might be looking for. And he was cool with it. And he left me a review saying I appreciated his honesty because he told me he wasn't a long hair specialist. And I was like, so being authentic like that, even showing your weaknesses goes a long way. So for oh, yeah. anyone listening, especially younger barbers, like never be afraid to especially connect with the client, letting them know what you don't specialize in too. Bro, that goes a long way. Absolutely, because we all want to talk about what we do specialize in. <laughs> Sometimes, know, especially if you want to client tell you want, you got to tell them what you don't do. <laughs> facts, facts. Trust me, bro. Like I don't got, I don't got texts. I don't like my hair. Like clients done told me they've been unhappy with their services. And uh, number one, I know barbers, we be sensitive about our stuff, oh, and we man, gonna we gonna defend it. We feel like we can't do no wrong. Yeah, you know and. I feel like that's the worst when we can't see our flaws, man. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you got people out there, they just think, you know, especially in our industry, bro, they just feel like they can do no wrong. That's Absolutely. dangerous, too, because you can't get nowhere. Yeah. You can't get nowhere, but. You can't. Yeah. That, that, that kind of keeps that mind state where it's just like you're not able to grow as a person if you can't admit your own flaws, right? Can't grow. You can't grow, man. And, like, know, at a client, my client today. He does his husband's hair, right? He's a newscaster, his husband. Mm -hmm. So he, he'll like dye his hair and stuff. He'll do his hair. And he wasn't happy with the way he did. He's like, this looks like shit. I got it. I got it. And then he told me, he's like, I wonder how Matt feels. He's got to do this every day. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, yeah, sometimes you go home. You're like, God, I want another shot. I would give me yeah. another shot. <laughs> hey, bro, this is a good segment right here, bro. For real, for real. Yeah. Because there's been plenty of times to where I done cut somebody's hair and I went home like, man, bro, I don't think dude coming back, you know, or <laughs> right. like, man, I could have did better on that fade. You know, yeah. it, it deals with us. It, it hurts. It, yeah, it, it, it keeps you up at night sometimes. Just like, or it's like you see him reschedule on the book. Be happy. Like, yeah. What? Right. Well, you see them reschedule, and then you're like, okay, now I got to get them. Now I got to right. get them. Right. It's right. all about that anxiety coming in to perform. Sometimes it's that second time client where, and sometimes I tell them too. That's another thing I tell them. I'm like, I'm not going to knock this out of the park the first time. Maybe mm -hmm. not even the second time, but by the right. third time, I should be to where you need to be. Like, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get all the, all of our communication straight and, you know, our adjustments figured out, right? Dude, I, I say something similar. If I cut a client's hair for the first time and mm -hmm. I give them the mirror, I'd be like, not too bad for the first swing, huh? There Just to go. let them know, like, bro, this is the first swing, you know? Yeah. So, you know, Can I take that from you? Because I might use that one. Man, take it, bro. <laughs> take it, because it's humbling. Like not too bad for the first swing, huh? Yeah, And, man. you know, they'll like it, and, you know, hopefully they come back. There you go. Yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's tough sometimes. So continuing on in your story, so where where so you went to start going to the barber shop that really started to connect with you, right? Say it again. Well, you you start going to the the all male oh, yeah. barber shop and everything. I started to connect with you. Mm -hmm. Um, what was like the moment where you were like clipper in hand and you're like, let's try this out. <laughs> Right, right, man, dog. Um, the moment I think, bro, just being at the, at the shop, that kind of made me be like, okay, I think I know what. what just I at your sisters. Do. 
this was just when my mom used to take me to different shops. Yeah. In the Houston area, just to so I can find my barber and stuff like that. So right. this me being in the atmosphere, I think it struck something then, like, man, I think this oh, is what yeah. I want to do. So I was like 10, 10 at that time when we relocated back to Katy. When I got probably about 13, I started doing the wave thing, brushing my hair all the time. Yeah. And I had to keep it fresh throughout the week. So I went to I went to Dollar General. So I had some a little bit of money at the time and we had a Dollar General right across from the house. I went there, bought me a Dollar General type pair of clippers, you okay. know, for like $14, $16, bro. And I bought some edges from over there. And the edges, <laughs> you put batteries in it. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, man. Dude, yeah, I put- did that one time <laughs> on vacation. Yeah. I went to like a CVS. So I was like, man, I got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I just want to like shave my chest or something to be honest. <laughs> But but I was like, yo, this thing won't even run for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Not even. (laughs) Right. But the funny thing is, bro, at least from what I thought, the the trimmers, I felt like there were some hitters, though. (laughs) Well, I felt like them joints were some hitters. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, bro. So I started. Yeah. (laughs) But let me backtrack. Matter of fact, I was trying to cut my hair before that because... I wanted to somewhat stay sharp, you know, in between in between haircuts and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, so my mom, you know, she used to shave with those big razors. Yeah, those big plastic razors, bro. <laughs> and I used to be in the mirror trying to edge myself up yeah. like that, you know, with the razor, do it on the side and stuff. Absolutely. But I'll just edge up the front. Yeah, I man, I was trying to hit the Gillette on the C cup when I had hair. I was like, let me see if I can Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> just cut the crap out of myself, man. Man, I done did that a whole bunch of times, bro. Absolutely, A whole bunch man. of times, man. Uh, I had this buddy. Uh, he used to cut hair, too. His name was Carlton. We called him C-Dub. His name was yeah. Carlton. He, he stayed like a street over. And uh, I remember one time I cut my hair. I messed it up. I just shaved my whole thing bald. And I went to school. Tried yeah. to wear a hoodie and everything, bro. But, <laughs> you know, you can't really wear hoodies in school. So I went yeah. to school bald. My hair wound up growing back out or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Maybe a month and a half later in the breakfast line, I see my homie Carlton come to school with a fresh baldy. I walked up to him. I said, bro, (laughs) you messed up on your haircut, huh? (laughs) Yeah, bro. Yeah, I had to shave your bald. I was like, man. So that was our little connection thing right there. Started cutting my own hair at like, you know, 13, 14. And I got a lot of nephews too. So I used to cut their hair. There you cut go. my uh cut my friend's hair eventually. I used to cut in the boys' restroom in high school in junior high. No way. And, uh, yeah, so bro. Snuck out I, of I, class. Huh? So you snuck out of class. No, nah, it was you, uh it was during breakfast time. Oh, in the morning. Yeah, in the morning. The first thing. Yeah. Man, middle school, you couldn't tell me to do anything that early in the morning. <laughs> Damn, bro, for real, I was on it. I'm, I was a breakfast dude anyway. I'm still a breakfast dude, so I'll be, you know, I'll be up. So it was all in the restroom, you know, getting edge ups and, you know, yeah. little mini tapers. I couldn't really taper like that, but I'll right. bring it down and edge them up real good. Okay. So what kind, of, what kind of student were you, especially with, like, your father and the educational background? Were you this model student? Were you bad in school, good, or how that kind of pan out? Man, so... I was good when I paid attention. Mm-hmm. I was good when I paid attention and stayed focused, but that attention probably lasted like at the longest, the first six weeks of school yeah. or the first, you know, few months, man. And I would stop paying attention and uh, I'll get in my own way. But bro, I dropped out. I, I dropped out in 11th grade. I dropped out in 11th no way. grade. Really? Yeah, bro. I dropped Did you out kind of run into any trouble or anything? Yeah, bro, I had a lot going on, man. Yeah? I had a lot going on, bro. Let's talk about it. What happened? <laughs> so, man, so in the Houston area, even Katy, even right outside, there was a lot of stuff going on in like 06, 08. Basically, the things that happened in the inner city in Houston, it was sometimes flood over to our area. Of course. You know, uh, families will try to bring their kids, you know, out of certain environment and it was all a melting pot so it was a lot going on around that time man and uh i wound up 
getting into some trouble. And uh, bro, I was in, I had I had to drop out of school because I was in jail. Yeah. I was in jail. I was locked up, bro. And my we got, mom we had got, to go. got back to back episodes with my guests that went to jail. Let's go. No. Yeah, <laughs> man. So I'm like, so, my mom called. She was like, bro, son, like, you still in there. You still, you know, this, that, and the third. School looking for you. I got to withdraw you. So I said, okay, you know, go ahead and withdraw me. And um, I was like 17 at that time, too, like 17. And um, so she had like to go juvie. ahead and withdraw me. Say it again. So it was like juvie, right? Nah, so in Texas, 17 is adult. So what? You, oh, you know, bro, they don't play in Texas. Set of rules. I never knew that. Bro, they don't play in Texas, man. They'll, they boy, they'll lock you up for anything in Texas, man. Like the police, they, they run your plates. They'll ride behind you and run your plates yeah. and drive off. If they don't find nothing, if they do find something, they're going to pull you over. Yeah. Like they're going to beat you up. Like, yeah, Texas yeah. is just like that, man. So talk and, about the road back. Ah, uh, so the road back, man. Um, like, bro, I always came from like good stock. You know, my family, you know, was always, you know, they raised me, right? So I went through a few things, man. And uh, when I was 18, I had to, I had to, based on my situation, I had to come out to the DFW. And, um, like, the judge thought it would be a better environment for me, better situation. Yeah, good idea. So I was, yeah, so I was able to come out to the DFW. As I came out here, so before I came out here, my sister, one of my older sisters, you know, she got saved. She got into the church and everything. And uh, she used to talk to me on the phone. And as I went to, through different things, you know, she would pray with me on the phone. When I came to the DFW, I started to visit her church uh, called mm -hmm. Real Life Ministries. And um, both of my sisters went there. And uh, my pastor, he's from New Orleans. And uh, he has a real, real strong, strong testimony. Like, okay, he like when you hear his testimony, like it's it's um like powerful. Well, yeah, like he was really, you know, in the streets and whatnot. And um, okay, yeah, he was so, um, bro, like he just kind of took me up under his wing and uh I already wanted something different in life, bro. So I started to go to hear the word, hear the teaching, and my life was transformed, you know, just through the teaching and just through situations. And um, bro, I just grew. wasn't always perfect. Even backslid, came back, you know, to the to the grace of God, and um, He done been shaping my life, you know, since then. So That's beautiful, man. I mean, you know, my sister. Before I got saved, man, like my sister was going through things, man, and we thought she lost her mind. And my older sister, too. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> imagine coming home, you know, coming home from jail and doing what I had to do. And my sister going through so much to where when I come home, her mind is not the same. You yeah. know, like she and was in bad fair. situations to where and she could have lost her That's kind of like mind. that parental figure, like we we're talking about, right? Like, yeah, bro. I think that's the mantle I always carried ever since my dad passed and I got older, having a lot of sisters and stuff like that. So it's like that to this day. But uh, I remember, you know, me coming home and um, I had to hold my older sister in my hands, bro, because she thought like some things were going on with her. She was paranoid. She was going through this, that and the third and she couldn't sleep. So I remember coming home and just noticing things were off with my sister. And I had to hold her in my arms, bro, until she fell asleep. And um, mm. I was up for a straight 24, 36 hours straight just watching over my sister, bro. When I came to the DFW, she came with me. We, we rode the mega bus or the Greyhound out there to the DFW. Her, my sister, and my mom. We're at a church service, and, you know, my pastor could tell – like something was on my sister, like something was different. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she went to the altar pass to pray for, and I seen my sister really get delivered, like really seeing her get delivered and saved and strengthened. Days after that service, man, my sister, she started to come back too, slowly but surely. She started to come back to herself. She started to smile again, you know, 
So That's like great. I, you know, I just seen the real the realness of God from a you know from from a real standpoint. So how old were you at that point? When your sister, well, you say you're 18. I was 18. Or, yeah. I was okay. 18. So, yeah, man, that sounds like a long couple of years you had to go through there. A lot of a lot of changes, a lot of growing. Yeah, it was. And a lot, you know, a lot being reborn, it seems, too, right? Yeah, bro. It was a lot of confusion. It was a lot of, you know, because what I went through from 16 to, to 18, well, really, no, nah, I'll say about 15, 16, 17, 18, those four years, it was things that was foreign to me. Yeah. That I never really expected to go through from getting in trouble to hanging with certain, you know, just just in a whole different atmosphere to it affecting my home front, my family, yeah. me, you know, finding Christ. Like it was it was it was a roller coaster. Yeah, man, you got through it, though. I mean, that, that's the beautiful part. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of like that crowd you hang around can kind of dictate a lot. And, you know, you got to. You gotta kind of be around the right people sometimes, and that helps, especially when you found your pastor. You, you know, you're able to kind of relate to him in a lot of ways with his past, and I'm sure he got a grasp of a lot of people, you know, with his past and everything. So that that's great, man. I mean, yeah, man, I, I was blessed growing up, honestly. Like, I never got in much trouble. Um, yeah, you're talking about junior high. The only thing I can think of is, you know, going back to Houston. I was selling like, you know, bootleg CDs, like <laughs> right. I'd buy the Mike Jones, the who was Mike Jones album and then make like 10 copies. And I was selling them to my, <laughs> to my classmates. Yeah, for that sure. Was like the hot stuff that that Houston way back in the like day, 05, <laughs> 04, whatever. Burning, burning CDs on line wire and bear share. Yeah, man. Just, just flipping those things. Right. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's about the, the worst stuff I would do, honestly. But yeah, yeah man, just blessed. So moving yeah, forward man. from there, what kind of what was next? Did you did you kind of find another job? And did, was that when you kind of messed around with sales? Did you go to school or? Well, so when I make, when I moved to the DFW, uh, I tried to go back to high school, and they said, you know, based on my situation, I no, they said because my credits or something like that was so behind. Mm. that it wouldn't make no sense for me to go back to high school and I was getting older. So they have an alternative school out here called Keys Learning Center. Mm. And you work at your own pace. And if you work quick, you graduate quick. Okay. So, bro, I was just doing my work, man. And I graduated like in six months. Oh, there you go. Shoot. Yeah. So I graduated like at what, 19? Like a year late? 19? Not and, bad. Uh, yeah, bro. And, um, so I wanted to go ahead and go to barber college right after that, get it on. But there you go. Uh, I didn't have no car. <laughs> I yeah. didn't have no real transportation to get out there. So that was a dream deferred. And yeah. uh, around that time, my 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 pastor he opened up a restaurant, Two Sisters Restaurant, Cajun, you know, New Orleans food. That was my first like legit real job. So okay, I worked there for about two years. What'd you do uh, there? So I started off as a server. Okay, I was yeah, gonna say, you know, tell I me wash to... dishes. That was my first gig. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was doing that too, bro. It was a small yeah. restaurant, so we did everything. We washed dishes, we served. Well, we served. We washed dishes at the end of the day. Then it got to a point to where I started to help out the cook, which was my brother in law at the time. So, okay. you know, we had to be well rounded over there. You wore a lot of hats. <laughs> had to, bro. Had to, bro. So I, you know, I quit after two years. I started the sales job, and uh, that lasted about six months. I had people slam the door on my face, <laughs> yeah. threatening to threaten to sick their little itty bitty dog on me. You know what I'm saying? Like the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest stuff, man. But I had fun. What were you selling? AT and T U verse cable. I mean, shoot, that's not bad. No, it's not. It's not. Are the knives or vacuum cleaners or uh, I was I selling payment it. processing. Right, right. I'm going I to business time. owners being like, I can get you a better rate, man, if you don't get out of here. Right, right. <laughs> hey, they come to the barbershop with that, man. I'm like, bro, we good yeah. with Square. <laughs> you good. use Square? Huh? You use Square, you said? Mm, yeah. 
So one of the things you were talking about, I use Square. We use Square at the shop. I use Square previously as well. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things you were talking about was uh, seamless booking. Is one of the mm-hmm. things you kind of w- want to improve this year. Yeah, so what do you well, mean by that? I know what you mean by that, but explain what you mean by that. Yeah, same with the booking. As far as um, this is an easier, a easier process to book, a smoother process to book, you know, for the customer, uh, making that that client journey as easy as possible from the exactly. internet to the barber chair, yeah. or from the booking platform to the barber chair. So I know the platform we're using now, they have to download the app. You know, go to the app store, yeah. find me again, and create, you know, create their profile, their profile and stuff like that all yeah. before booking if it's a new customer. Too many steps. Too many steps, man. You know, yeah. so I feel like that can defer a potential customer. Absolutely. We're um, going through it right now with our cancellation policy. Mm-hmm. So we, we used Square. We added the cancellation policy, and it was having the the customers put in their card number every single time that they would book. And we didn't even know that because they weren't complaining about or anything. It took like our owner kind of like, Hey, real quick question. Like asking my client, he's like, did you have to put in your card number again when you booked? He's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, it shouldn't be like that. We got to get that fixed. A hundred percent. That's crazy. Yeah. So we don't have a cancellation policy right now because we're waiting on square to handle the ticket and they're not. So we kind of have to be a little bullish and bothering them to get them to do it. But yeah, yeah. since then I, since we implemented the policy, I had one no show that I charged and ever since we took it off, I've had like four or five that we couldn't charge. <laughs> so, Dang, yeah. Yeah, so bro. Rough, hey. man. It means a lot. So are you going to stick with Square or are you trying to look for a whole new platform? Well, no. So I I only use Square for a a POS system, you know, just to charge. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So I use. What's your booking company here? Uh, So right now I use, um, I use Booksy, man. I've been using Booksy for about two, like five years now. It's a good, co- it's it's a good service, but it's just, you know, it costs money, number one. And then yeah. then they got to download the app and take all these steps. Yeah. So I'm about to switch to Squire. With Squire, they don't have to download the app. So w- explain to me how Squire works. So, Why I mean, I've been, I've been. To, so it's just a link, right? You would give them. Yeah, it's, it's a link. I believe they can download the app, but, yeah. or they can go straight to our website and uh, go ahead and book and put the information in. But yeah, I've been talking to the guys at Squire, and uh, it's a booking platform strictly for barbers. Like, right. they don't have massage therapists on there. They don't have, you know, dog cleaning services, dog washing services on there. It's yeah. strictly for barbers. So Booksy does that? Booksy's like, yeah. yeah I didn't know that. Book, Booksy got like nail techs and everything, you know, everybody. Yeah. Okay, I can see that, yeah. A lot of the service-based businesses. Okay. But yeah, Booksy's been good to me, like, you know, it's been real good to me. It helped no jumpstart doubt. my business and keep it up, you know. So for- it's good that you have that option. They can click on just in the website. Oh, right, good? Man, I got a phone call. That don't mess me up. It's all good. Yeah, I was saying it's good that they can just book straight through the website. That's like the pro- the best way because you can just share that link. And as long as it like saves their info so they don't have to like do it over and over maybe, then that's that's good. But Square's pretty decent too for for the appointment yeah. too. I heard about Square though. I heard, you know, I seen it even a couple times on. I didn't even know it was Square. I seen it on other barbers platform. I'm like, man, what booking app is this? It looks yeah, pretty software. simplified, you know, clean and, and quick. And of course they want, you know, the whole plan is to offer that for free in hopes that they can get you to pay for their payment processing, which, which seems you're already doing. So yeah. see, if you want to try it out, if you haven't made that full change, I mean, give it a shot, man, because you already probably have a, uh, like an account with them. So yeah, you can just kind of create a website through there and then, you know, all the bookings on there put the services in and it takes a while to kind of get the hang of, but once you, once you're in, it's, it's pretty nice. Okay. Okay. I was just going to ask you that, you know, so you say you like square. It, it, yeah. It's good. So yeah. when I worked in PA, I worked in a salon 
And it was somewhere I kind of got to develop a lot of confidence. And I got, I was a b lone barber in a salon with cosmetologists. So I kind of had to do my own thing and grow with myself. And they were kind of stuck back in time in the 80s. They had right. this old school cash register. And it was like, ching, ching. <laughs> you open the thing. And so I'm like, we have to get online booking and we have to have a new POS system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because for sure. We I got to rest here. And so I got the online booking, but it was all my like project. So I had to like, you know, she just paid for the POS basically. So I got all of our stuff on there said and all good. And man, just the, just the amount of like not having to like stress and answer text messages and all this stuff and answer phone calls all day at, at the salon and at home. And it was just like, it was pleasure just go to bed wake up and see ah i got full book of clients today. this is this is beautiful this yeah, is the way it should so. be <laughs> so, the way it should be 100 so it was a pleasure seeing that like my the shop that i went to in atlanta already used it so i'm like all right great because i already have the app or you have an account and it's just you know it was like i knew it like the back of my hand already so yeah. that's good so consider yeah. that if you know if you haven't made the full leap yet to squire Okay. The Squires okay, doing good things too. I know, I know it's a black owned business. I know, I know they've done a lot of good promotion with it and yeah, I, I don't know much about it. So yeah. I'm sure it's somewhat similar, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it is too. Yeah. I mean, if I could really know how square work, but I would assume it's somewhat similar. You know, yeah. The booking. I mean, it sounds the same. <laughs> I mean, sure. They kind of all the same to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, right they do sound the same squire and square yeah i was like what do they do there did they just Whoa, pronounce it wrong <laughs> and i'm like oh no, i don't i don't try to put squire in google and square popped up right like, do you mean square <laughs> yeah that's a tough that's a tough uh thing to overcome from them i'm sure yeah sorry right, man so let's um let's go back before we do that where where'd you go to barber school or kind of were you an apprentice how'd you go about that yeah, so in Texas, man, they don't even got an apprenticeship. They okay. don't even mess around with it. But I don't know if Arizona did either. Because when I started going in different states, people were talking about apprenticeships. And I'm like, huh, what's that? <laughs> and I'm right, like, well, you didn't right. have to go to school? <laughs> right, for real. Like, what is that? I think yeah. they're big on that, like on the East Coast, like Philly and New York and stuff yeah, like that. For sure. Yeah, bro. So I so went, went to... to I went to Dallas Barber and Stylist College in Arlington. Okay. Yeah, in Arlington, so, man. So um, did they do financial aid or did you have to save or like how'd you make that happen financially? Because I know that was kind of one of the things that held you up in the beginning and it also held me up in the beginning too. Yeah, so they did financial aid over there. Good, so yeah. I was able, you know, do the fast, the whole fast for situation. Yeah. And uh, I was able to, you know, to get into barber school. And, nice. um, uh, I had a ball in barber school, man. Like it, it went down in barber school, real fun. Dude, you got bond with those people that you'll never have with yeah. anyone else. It seems like yeah, everyone bro. broke. <laughs> everyone. Oh, everybody going through something, trying to juggle school, yeah. work, family. Work. Yeah, exactly. But, I was like the Van Wilder of barber school. Like it, yeah. <laughs> it took me like a year and a half to get in. I was like a super senior. It yeah, was, for sure. Hey, bro, it took me about a year and a half to get out, man. Look, yeah. towards the end, the owner was like, bro, just your last 300 credits is on me. Go ahead and get up out of here, bro. <laughs> Go and take your test and get up out of here, dog. Man, they didn't do that for me. <laughs> I wish I wish they would have. But... Dude, I missed like, what, two months straight from barber school? I had to get some stuff together in my life, man. Yeah. You know, I had to shake back. So That's tough. It's tough not cutting hair for that long, too, and like diving back talking yeah. about anxiety yeah bro so what was your first situation out of school out of school out of barber school yeah oh uh, like shop wise yeah all right bro so while i was still in school i get a call from my sister and um she knows this lady and her husband or her boyfriend is a pharmacist okay. and they're opening up a barber shop and <laughs> Bro, thank you. That's what I like. <laughs> like huh? Man, so oh, 
complete <coughs> complete chaos. Yeah. Doesn't seem like they know a lot about barbering, maybe. No, so <laughs> I'm still in barber school, so I used to go over there well, after school, after work or something like that and cut. Really no traffic at all. They're in the shopping center, at, you know, in uh, Watauga, one of the, the small towns out here, man. And mm -hmm. I used to be over there with the wife, with the, with you know, with with the, you know, with the lady a lot. Yeah. And she don't know nothing about barbering. The husband don't know nothing about barbering, cutting no hair. So the few people that would come in here, like her nephews, might come in and get a haircut, or few people from the neighborhood come in and get a haircut, bro. She's standing right over me as I cut. Oh, oh make sure you do this. Make sure, make sure you do that. Are you gonna, are you gonna get that line out? Like right there, acting like a mom with a kid. Man, bro. <laughs> uh, okay, let's now let's watch it. She was just, you know, micromanaging. Yeah. And um, bro, it was just so awkward, bro. She would try to tell me certain things about barbering, and like, come on, now you don't, you don't know. So yeah. that, that lasted about two, three weeks, and I was gone. Well, at least it was like a little, I mean, you weren't fully in, you know what I mean? You're still in school. It was a nice little preview of like what you didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, yeah. And may, maybe you made a tiny bit of money, you know, so that, that was something. So Yeah, it was. It was It was an experience for sure. Yeah, yeah I was lucky my first that, gig out. I was lucky my first gig out, but go ahead. Um, So what was the so, next shot? So my second shop, man, that's where, you know, everything pretty much kicked off at. Um, so this was a shop that my sister worked at for like years, for like a couple of decades or something like that, called the Hornies, the Hornies Barbershop. The Hornies Barbershop. That's why I paused when I said that. I want to see your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> the Hornies Barbershop, man. Okay. Owned by a real I mean cool cat, man, Travis the Horny. Oh, okay. the That's fans. his name. That yeah, makes, Travis. All makes home, sense bro. now. <laughs> Old school, you know, black cat got the slick back hair. Yeah. You know, too cool from Bonham, Texas, man. He's what, 84, 85 right now? Still slick. This guy Still was a cool. pimp in the shop, wasn't he? Bro, I'm talking <laughs> about, hey, man, Mr. D was something, man. I still talk to him to this day, you know, and chop it up with him. He said, I but, know you um, ain't a pimp, a pimp. Remember what I taught you. 100%. <laughs> Keep your heart, three stacks. Yeah. yeah. So, man, so I was still, so after that situation, I still didn't go directly into a shop. I was still working and cutting hair at home. Okay. And I walked into the barbershop just to switch things up to get a haircut. He was like, uh, he was sitting down in the chair, the chair he always sits in. You cool as brother, right? I said, yeah, I'm Cora's brother. You in barber school still? I was like, no, nah, I'm done with barber school. Well, what you doing? I said, well, I'm just working and cutting from the house right now. He was like, okay, okay. He said, uh, well, you trying to work in the shop? He was like, no, nah. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool right now. I'm cool. <laughs> he said, um, man, start coming on Saturdays. Bring your clippers on Saturdays. Just start coming on Saturdays. I said, yeah. cool. I I start coming on Saturdays. Why didn't and, uh, you want to? Why didn't you want to work in a shop yet? Well, so I was at a barber school. I had passed my written, but I failed my practical. So you didn't get your license yet, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was just chilling at home doing my thing, bro. And uh, so I started, you didn't want to go back. No, check this out. It's in the store. So okay. So I started cutting with him or whatnot, and I told him my situation. Still got to do my practical. I'm cutting in the shop or whatnot. Time go. Time go past. I'm like, okay, well, let me go ahead and start starting on my starting on my practical again. So I schedule it out and everything. I even had the stylist over there um, show me how to do perm rods again because that's why I struggled at the first time. Oh so uh, wait, that was part to... of your practical, bro. Yes. Dude. So it was a barber and stylist. The year I started barber school, they took it off the curriculum. Bro, you super. So good. I was like, thank God, bro. <laughs> We had to do perm rods. We had to do like a mock, a mock, a uh, relaxer, uh, a facial. We had to do all that stuff. Man. So yeah, we just I had got... shave and cut, man. That's all we had. Bro. Yeah, they want to do everything. So I learned from the stylist. She taught me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I scheduled everything out, man. I scheduled for like 1.30 or something like that in Dallas. 
on the other side of town. And uh, I still had to work that day for a few hours. Yeah. But as I was working, bro, I got sick. Oh, no. So I thought I got sick, bro. I'm cutting. I had to stop. I go to the restroom and I, ugh, I throw up. <laughs> We've all been there. Bro, I go to the restroom. I'm like, it's coming out both ends, bro. Yeah, like, man. We've all been so I'm there. like, Mr. D, bro, I, sir, I think I'm sick. Like, I'm not feeling well. And think about it. I'm cutting. I'm studying. And I'm using the restroom at the same time. Yeah. Cutting, studying, using the restroom. I'm going through it. I'm like, man, Mr. D, I think I'm sick. He's sitting <laughs> in that same chair. He said, son, you're not sick. You're just nervous. <laughs> and like my eyes opened up. He's like, you're not sick. You're nervous. And I'm like, man, you, you, I think you're right. Because <laughs> I, I never felt being nervous like that. Yeah. Never, bro. I never felt that type of, you know, a nervousness like that. So he was like, you're not, you're not sick. You're nervous. You know, I kind of just calmed down a little bit, finished, you know, the clients I had. And I had like about another 45 minutes to really just study and calm down before I went to, I went and I, you know, I passed the test. I, oh, I passed yeah, the practical test, man. And everything kind of, kind of, uh, flow like, you know, flow like water for me, man. And, um, but it was crazy though. Cause when I was in that test, like the first time I failed, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing some stuff. I failed twice. You failed a practical twice. twice? Yeah, so check this out. The first time I failed, I went right after school, right? And uh, I failed off a of technicality. My model, he didn't have his ID, and my smart was sleeveless. Oh, really? Automatic fail. Wow. Right? Couldn't take the test. So after that time, so much time passed by. And when I went again, I just wasn't ready. Yeah. He had a big old beard. I'm thinking he had a big old beard. And when it came time to shave it, it took me so long. I couldn't really finish. And when I walked in, I seen people in there with no facial hair. So I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking you had to have like a beard or something like that, you know, to do the shaving part, the 14 strokes. Yeah, I failed that, and I you know I passed the third time, but uh, I got I got like real sick that day. Yeah, man, it's it's gotta be demoralizing too, especially I mean just getting yourself so ramped up to do this, and then like it doesn't doesn't pan out a couple times, and man, that that, that's just another way you persevered, man, through life and through this barber journey, man. Bro, it, it was it was crazy. And the funny part, not even the funny part, it was crazy because the second time I was in there, I seen another guy fail technically too because he didn't have a model. He dude, he just, he grabbed a homeless guy from off the street and was like, come in here, let, you know, I'm going to cut your hair, blah, blah, blah. The homeless guy got sick. I don't know if he was going through withdrawals or whatever the situation was, man. but he just going back and forth and he has to go out the room and he's in a restroom. You just hear him hurling the whole time, calling Earl, 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 <laughs> Earl. And he's in there for a minute. And, you know, the conductors, they're like, uh, if, he, if he's in there any longer, you're going to have to, you're going to have to forfeit your test. And uh, the dude, like he had to leave. He he couldn't take the test, so you know yeah. it'll be stuff like that that happen. Absolutely, man. So, what was kind of the steps before you opened up the studio? So, honestly, man, like I didn't really have no real system, you know, towards opening up the barber studio. Just did it. I just did it. You know, I just knew you my season. As you go, that, right. My first bosses kind of did that. They saved yeah, a little man. money. And then they had some, you know, they didn't have much in there, but they, they just started it and then just kind of built as they went. That's 100% what I did, bro. That's what like, did. When I first started, I didn't have everything in there. It looked like I was cutting in the shoebox. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I took yeah. a picture of a haircut, it looked like I was in a big old shoebox. Couple mirrors on the wall, no TV, no shelves, just a painted, yeah. just painted walls. So, What color was the wall? Like a like a beige or light beige yeah, type beige. color. Okay, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. And okay. um, so like, let's talk about finding your barber identity and knowing yourself, right? 
Like that takes some time to figure out, right? Yeah. I mean, that goes back to our strengths and weaknesses too. But like, just knowing yourself, did you know who you were, kind of yet then, and while you know, opened the man. shop, or were you still kind of learning? I had an idea, but I didn't know. You know, I didn't really know. Um, I just thought I base I base my barbering career over what I seen when I was a kid. 10 or 11, you know what I'm saying? In Pull up to shop. the barbershop, you know, mm -hmm. laugh with your, with, your, with, your, with your co-workers, cut some head all day, you know, leave at night, got a stack of yeah. cash or whatnot. That's, you know, so I kind of framed my career after that in a sense. But I had so much respect for barber and I was like, you know, this has to be more because I was around so many people that didn't really see the full potential of barbering. So oh, it was kind of yeah. like I had a vendetta. Like, I got to show y'all that bar is different. Yeah. yeah. Then I also knew what I didn't want to become because I used to tell people all the time, like, in my first barbershop, Indy Horny's, I seen 14 barbers leave. Wow. I, seen, I, I stopped counting that 14. Yeah. You know, and they all left for different reasons, left out the industry for different reasons got different jobs for different reasons, got, you know, got fired for different reasons. So I always knew what I, what I didn't want to become, you know? Yeah. So I had that mind frame first. Yeah, man. Seeing barbers leave is like demoralizing itself. It's just Bro. like, man, it's like, what is wrong with these people? Like, what Bro. is it? Is it bad? Should I leave? Like, Bro, straight up. And I was the youngest barber in there too. And I once heard a barber say, he said, man, he said, man, this barber stuff ain't cutting it, man. I'm about to go get a job across the street or something like that. But he, he said it jokingly, but he was like dead serious. Yeah. Because it was slow. You Just know? because he wasn't making enough money. Yeah. Just too slow. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the time we're in right now. With It's almost uh, February now. So it's, it's that time where it's just slow and people start getting negative and start yeah, trying bro. to – Start trying to infect the rest of the shop with negativity. Man, and, and it's yeah. just like, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Like, wherever you go, <laughs> it's going to be like this, too. I tell people that all the time, bro. And it's like that for everybody. Starting at this time of year is not what you want to do. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're not going to take all your clients with you either. You know what I mean? Right. Say so you want to start over, you're going to lose over half of them. Bro, I don't yeah. lost so many clients. It's, it's, a, it's a shame, bro. I don't lost yeah. a lot, bro. It's just like Barber is a building block. And once you start over at all, like, I mean, you're back to step two or three. You know, it might not be one, but I mean, you're not up to step 10 like you were before. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, man. Like, knowing yourself, did you know you were like a good enough leader to open a shop? Did you give yourself kind of that confidence that you think you could lead a team? Well, I ain't, I ain't know what I was, you know, when I first opened the shop. <laughs> well, like, was that your I whole was. idea, though, to hire other barbers, or did you just want to be by yourself in there at first? So I just knew, like, my season was over with at the last shop. Yeah. I haven't stayed, I haven't stayed, like, what, almost a year past me knowing it was time for me to leave. Just based off, you know, my loyalty, you know, to the owner, you know, yeah. and I wanted to make sure things were, you know, in place for him before I left. When I did leave, that loyalty is tough to bro, give. Up. What? Man, that that is my. That's, if you talk about weakness, that's a weakness for me. Straight up, bro. Like even Straight if up. I feel like I'm ready to move on or something's coming, like, man, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to let someone that, you know, fed me down yeah you know I mean? real talk, bro. it's so hard but go ahead, no. like no i stayed there until like i was like the only barber in there bro yeah working like a, a, a eight a eight chair shop and it was just me him and another barber that came and went you know what i'm saying yeah so like it was tough man so i i, I just waited until a few new barbers came in there and yeah. i slowly the i slowly departed that was that's just respectable man yeah, a lot of people wouldn't do that. Yeah, bro. Like I said, bro, I, I still talk to Mister D to this day. You know, so nice. He appreciated that. I'm sure that went a long way with him. Yeah, man. He good people, man. He good people, bro. Nice. So, yeah.
But um, when I got into the barbershop, I didn't really know um, if I was a leader or not. I just know I love people and I love my craft. And I had a heart for people. Yeah. That could be a weakness too, you know, having a heart for people. Sure. Man. Yeah. You take advantage so, of sometimes. Yeah. So I just knew I wanted to create my own atmosphere because I felt like I hit a plateau where I was at. I hit like a ceiling. Yeah. So I want to create my own plateau. Just work on a different system. Um, and I wanted a space to where I can do different things at the shop. You know, do host workshops, um, you know, meet and greets and stuff like that. So it's only like a 960 square feet spot, but that's all I need. It's not you too know? bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like that was all I needed, bro. Now, what I have always thought, if I open my own studio or if I was in a studio working as a barber, I feel like that is one of the things that kind of like sparks creativity more. You're kind of sitting around, especially if you're by yourself. It's like, you can get weird. You know what I mean? You can kind of like, let me put this camera up and just come up with something. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you kind of spark your content creation sometimes? Like how, how did, what's your process in like coming up with a new concept, you yeah. know, a cutter concept, right? Oh, I caught that. I caught that. <laughs> Caught that pun. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a few things that I do, man. Um, I just take what, what's happening in that day, mm -hmm. things that didn't happen in the shop, crazy interaction with clients or um, things that I would see wrong in the barbershop. You know, like I seen 14 barbers leave, so I seen a lot of wrong stuff in the barbershop, you know, a lot of infractions. So if I'm doing like an educational uh type of content, yeah, I'll use things that I done seen in the shop like the other day. Or I use things that I done thought about when I'm laying down in the bed looking at looking at the ceiling. You right. know, you know, because my mind is always going, I'm always thinking, and you know, I'm always reading up on stuff, man. So that's how my educational content would come about. Or you know, my funny content, man, it just comes from, I'm naturally goofy, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that funny content, bro, it just comes from real life situations. We're talking about this kind of content right here? Yeah, that kind of stuff, bro. Like, <laughs> Boy, you pull that thing up quick. Yeah, when you suddenly realize a client left you six months ago. Bro, I was talking bro, to you bro. about that before we went live. That kind of yeah. happened. Yeah, <laughs> I was hey, like, bro, being your deep sleep and be like, hold up, I ain't seen Chris in about six, six, three months. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where's Gerald at? For real, like, damn, like, what did I do? Ain't even this is a good nothing. client I missed. <laughs> no warning, no nothing. You know, I went away two weeks for the holidays, so I was like, is it because of that? So right, I, messaged, right. I straight up messaged him because he was one of my guys. I said, I'm sorry I disappeared for two weeks at Christmas. Right. <laughs> is it, is this someone of, else? I can piss someone off. I could see, like, you know, them procrastinating maybe. And that was one of the problems I had, too. I was like, not enough people are booking, you know, ahead of time. This, this is going to be a problem because I'm not going to be here. Yeah. So I bet he waited and couldn't get in. And maybe he got pissed. I don't know. Probably so. Probably. There ain't no telling. That's the thing, bro. <clears throat> like about clients leaving, depending on how they leave, sometimes we just don't know why. Yeah. We can speculate why and wonder why. You know, but sometimes we just don't know. But I got a way around that, though. How you do that? I do like a, an anonymous surveys. And uh, I'll ask certain questions. I'll let clients know it's all anonymous. And uh, give me your feedback. And um, I ask them certain questions, and they'll answer Sometimes it. Sometimes you can put back. the puzzle together and be like, "That's gotta be, bro. That gotta be Jimmy, bro. I knew that. <laughs> that has to be Jimmy, bro. Because that's the way he texts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Context clues. Yeah, man. But that's funny. I mean, it's, there's certain stuff with barbering that keeps you up at night, and that's one of them. Yeah. Losing a client, <laughs> bro. But yeah, oh, man. Yeah. You hand your client yeah, a mirror like that, you're just like, what am I doing, man? I right, right. Something. Hey, you know, before the video, you know what I did? I grabbed some grease and I said, 
<laughs> I'll put it all on the mirror. Right. You got to yeah. you got to overdo it. 100%. So when you're doing this content, is there anyone else in the shop? Sometimes, sometimes it'd be my coworker Shonda. Yeah. Uh LaShonda or it just be me. I like to do content like that when I'm by myself though. I'll be feeling awkward. And <laughs> right? else in the uh, shop. I did something recently and I was just like, man, I'm looking ridiculous over here. And it was like, I was trying to be dumb on purpose. It's one of those. So like, you look, look twice bro. as dumb. <laughs> on that mirror video I did, there was actually a lady outside sitting in her car and I had like the blinds up in the shop and she <laughs> seen me and uh, she turned off her headlights a little bit. So she had a little bit of, uh, you know, she was, uh, she helped me out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, and want to shine through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, man. Oh, there he is on Elevated Barbers. Oh, yeah. Spreading the good word. My boys, my boys. Yes, sir. Delmar. You got you got two parts, too, so that, that was the first. Yeah, bro, we had to just because um, we didn't have enough time for the first one. Right. Yeah. Oh, these, uh, these are always a hit for some people. People like the pimple popping videos and stuff. Yeah, they they do. So you they you do. put that as the thumbnail. That's an automatic click for some people, right? Man, for sure. I was expecting that mug to go viral, but I was like, man, this is about to go all around the internet, bro. Ain't yeah. go, that one ain't do too well. No. Oh man, sometimes sometimes they don't hit. Yeah. But a lot uh of times. so right now you're kind of pushing the zoom training that you're that you're getting into when we're talking about the educational um the educational aspect here and yeah. one thing i like how you do you kind of tease it right <laughs> yeah. this, this, this was a viral video these, these guys are about the, about the crap in the barbershop right yeah and so what you did before the shit goes down <laughs> you bro what? i i still get caught off guard with this one yeah, yeah wait for it. I think this was. There you go. You got the Zoom training right there. Yeah, bingo. Yeah, bro. So let's talk about this. How? Um. So February fifth. So is this a paid or free webinar it's free. type? Yeah, or... it's free. It's free. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a, is it on Zoom? Or it's a Zoom style training. No, it's going to be on Zoom. It's on Zoom. Okay, so they yeah, can live join. Zoom training. They can join. So, what are the certain? What are some of the things you're you're training in? What what are were you kind of focusing on on this run? So, this this is my first ever Zoom training. Period. You know, right. so There's a lot of learning that's going to happen for sure. Yeah, yes, it's, it's all new. Like me and my wife, we got to you know put together the whole Zoom package for the year because. If you don't, you only get like 30 minutes to speak. So we need a little bit more time than that. So yeah. we're getting all that back office stuff done. done. Okay. Um, but the the training, the training is called Barber Client Relations. And uh, very important. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent, man. Relationships is everything. Um, it's not all about the haircut. It's not all about how sharp your lines is, how blurry your face is, though it helps. But people buy from who they trust. People invite other people and refer people to who they trust and who they have a re relationship with. So that's the basis of the training, but it starts off with um, barbers understanding who their client is, understanding who their target client is and the people that they attract with the least effort. And uh, once we know our client, we know what to build our business about. But to truly know them is to really to study them and learn the ins the ins and outs of them, what they what they what they need, what they want, what they like, and building on building up on those things. And uh, if you're client client centric or customer centric, you can build your relation you can build your shop around that. Um, a lot of times, man, we build our shop or our career around ourselves. Yeah. About what we like, what we want to do, the music we want to listen to, this, that, and third. Although that's all good, fine, and dandy, but you know we're providing the service. So as we provide that service, we want to make sure that the clients that we want, they're in a good environment. 
um, they have the products that they need. They got the services that they need. And right. we just keep word that they that. need, not what you need, right? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And a lot of times, us as barbers, bro, we be unaware of certain things. Like, we can offend a client and not even know it. Yeah. They'll never tell us. You know, due to our conversation, uh, the shop music, um, you know, certain remarks we might say, other barbers might say, but we won't know that if we don't know them. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah a lot sometimes of I tread there. lightly certain things I say because, yeah. Or, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, I drive a truck, man. I got a pickup truck. Okay, fair. Okay, so you, you get excluded from this list. But in Atlanta, I got a top five psychopath car. Right, <laughs> so <laughs> if you're in the top five and you got a temporary license plate on, forget about it. Dude. Oh yeah, you're, for sure you're on the list. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But like any new okay. new client or someone new to the city, I'm trying to teach them some of the do's and don'ts. You know, number one, don't beep your horn at anyone. That, that's rule number one. And I learned that the hard way too. <laughs> but uh, I was like, before I get started, what kind of car are you drive? <laughs> so I make right. sure. Yeah. <laughs> not on the list right right so i yeah, don't offend yeah. nobody yeah exactly so yeah you gotta kind of you gotta kind of tread lightly especially before you know what's cool with your clients and what you can get away with and yeah. you know so so one of the things um would you recommend in terms of like learning your client taking notes on just like little things that is a part of their particular life like family or you know say they went on a trip just like a little note to remind yourself hey this guy went to greece let me follow oh, yeah. up on that you know? oh that's important man yeah one thing you know i try to do i try to remember the conversations we had last time right because when you remember it and pick it pick it back up uh, during the next visit like they light up they yeah. like that kind of stuff it shows that you know you're really listening to me yeah. You know, and it showed that you, you know, you got an interest in what I'm talking about because people love to talk about themselves. Absolutely. You know, you know people love to feel important and, and, yeah. and heard. So Just when you make special, it, makes them feel special. Yeah, 100 percent, man. 100 percent. So all that stuff plays a part, man. A lot of barbers may not feel like it's important, but it is. Yeah, today, I mean, just talking about today, I had a client that I've cut before, but I was. It was just so long. I mean, it was probably three months ago I cut him, and we were talking about the same exact shit we were talking about this <laughs> last time. It's like we got reintroduced. We may have added a couple new things, but we were just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh, wow. it's it's important. He forgot, too, though. <laughs> so right, I'm not right. putting it all on me. Right. But he forgot <clears throat> But uh, yeah, no, it's not about me though. At the end of the day, like nice. he can forget stuff about me, I shouldn't forget stuff about him. So right, right, for sure. That's the point you're driving home for sure. And it's actually harder for us too because we deal with so many different people. No oh, man, my head's just full. Sometimes I say it's not worth my memory to invest into you until I've seen you three times. Man, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you you helping yourself out. Yeah, I mean, so, to a degree, right? That makes sense. But like, mm -hmm. I can usually remember after the third time because my memory's horrific sometimes. I'm wow, trying to remember what my wife said. Oh, we gotta go here on Sunday, and I'm like, bro, "What? Wow. I, I got a podcast I scheduled." <laughs> like, Real talk, bro. Me too, dog. My memory, man, that stuff be going in and out. Yeah, man. So okay, so the Zoom training. So how long would be the perfect amount of time for it to be, you think? Honestly, I know I got to be quick with it. You know, I can't have people on too long. So yeah. I'm thinking about 45 minutes to an hour. That's what I'm kind of gauging it at right now. It's probably going to be about an hour because I got, I have a barber and a parent saying a few words on there. Okay. That's on useful. the Zoom training. Some external help. Yeah, so I got a barber named uh, Tori Concepcion. Um, she has 7250 Barbershop on Instagram. Super dope. And um, I have one of my clients. Uh, she has two autistic boys. And uh, she's going to talk from a parent's perspective on mm -hmm. how we can better service autistic kids. That's a beautiful angle right there. And yeah. you can talk 
about just like yeah i mean just like from my experience like just taking care of the kids and just making them feel comfortable like you know it means a lot for the parents and you know a lot of barbers don't like cutting kids but eventually they grow up and they're not going to forget and they're not going to forget how you treated them and their parents aren't going to forget either and so they're always going to be an extra see even if they try to steer away from you you know the parents are always going to steer them back into your hands so so yeah man that's super important and i love that angle and so you got three you got yourself you got a barber and a parent i mean i'd say that's plenty of content you're gonna go over an hour yeah bro i already (laughs) know i hope they stick around (laughs) so yeah man i mean how are you kind of promoting it other than the instagram and everything Um, so i mean instagram facebook um i'm inviting people personally so and um that's about it, it in a nutshell, man. Just personally. I heard you talk about Facebook a little bit on the pod and mm-hmm. how it's underutilized and how effective it can be, especially like in a community locally, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Now, Facebook is dope, man. Uh, I think Instagram is a lot of entrepreneurs on Instagram. Yeah. It's a lot of people, you know, it's a lot of producers on Instagram. Like music producers? No, like, like, it, like, People that produce like businesses and you know oh, how you yeah, got producers yeah. and consumers, yeah. So it's a lot of producers, it's a lot of producers on there too. You know, Rick Rick. <laughs> that too. A lot yeah. of them joints, man. You Absolutely. remember SoundCloud rappers? Oh, of course, yeah, man. Yeah. So, like so, any of those like NPC guys that go nuts on the NPC, I'm I'm just immediately like sucked into those videos. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent, bro. hundred percent. You got all. You got a whole lot of that, bro. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but like Facebook, man. Like you got families on Facebook. You got nine to five workers on Facebook. You got aunties on Facebook. You know, everybody's on Facebook. So the engagement is different on Facebook. So I'm trying to break that in a little bit. Absolutely, man. Yeah, bro. I'm trying to look at something. Here we go. It helped me to expand my career. It helped me to just excel within the barbershop and stand out in the barbershop and attract more people. I call it FIG, F-I-G. Okay, so you're going to teach them about FIG a little bit. Mm-hmm. What does FIG stand for? FIG stands for fill in the, fill in the gaps. Fill in the gaps. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So... Remember when I said, because I'm always talking about the 14 barbers that left, right? Yeah. So I got, I guess, better or I gained an advantage in the shop just by filling in the gaps. The things that I seen barbers not doing or noticed they weren't doing, I just did it. Um, Being short on the phone, not really having the best customer service, I slowed things down on the phone. And I built, I built like rapport, and I had good conversations uh, with the with the customers. I started using hot towels because they weren't using hot towels, so I got me a towel warm and started using hot towels. Just separating yourself, right? Being different. Yeah, yeah. This Being stuff really don't be important. like rocket science type stuff, you know. It's not. Yeah, it's it's, but it's it needs to be said. It's, I mean, it's a worthwhile point for sure. Yeah. Like when I started in the barber shop, I got kind of crap from my boss saying, "Why are you doing that this way? We all do it this way." And I'm like, "Will, I'm new, man. I'm trying to separate myself." And he's like, "All right, all right. fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> did, sure, fair enough. You can test hey, it. Yeah, hey man, like they wasn't really too happy with the stuff I was doing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just had to kind of fight. I had to fight that stuff, bro, and you know, just keep it going." You yeah, know, man, they said something about thing, my steamer. Yeah. You know, so. Let's check out the links here. Coolio. Rick, Rick. Okay, here we go. Let Bro, me... I went to my link the other day, and yeah. I was making content. I hit the link. That mug said error on it. I said, what the Bro, heck? I'm you... over here tripping. Someone told me mine did that one time, too. Um yeah. Did you refresh it and it worked or did so I had to something went on with the app I use, so I had to go back on the app and uh they had like a whole new link over there. So I had to, you know, copy the new link and put it on my profile. Gotcha. I said, What kind of stuff? I look like a false a false teacher over here. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that will make it hard to drop. Yeah. Get us back. So, okay, here's the links. I like how they're shaking. <laughs> yeah, cool. bro. So you got the Zoom train. That's at the very top. So that's what you're trying to push right now. Yeah. What is this Barber Mastermind group? Oh, yeah, man. I'm over here looking at these, these text messages coming through my phone. So right. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a real, real small group. You know what I'm saying? But it's for barbers to come. So it's on Telegram. Okay. And it's where we come together to just talk about different things, you know, with the shop, things that we can get better at as barbers. Uh, we, you know, we just chop it up about different things, man. Uh, any uh, tips I got, I bring it on there. Any questions I got, uh, I bring it to the uh, mastermind, to the telegram. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, we got... it's small right now, but you know, it's growing. It's growing. Absolutely, man. You got to start somewhere. I mean, shoot, just getting stars, everything. Come on, you boy. Get... Come on. Hey, we got a guest appearance here. About to be my son. Come on, Papa. <laughs> What's I got him? He good. Come on, Bubba. Hey, he be, he be busting in the all my little podcasts and the video. Say, hey, Matt. What's your name, little man? Hi. Say LJ. 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 Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on the Your Barber podcast. You're a star in the making. <laughs> you got that boy smiling. Yes, All right. Sir. Go to mama real quick. Stick anymore. He's feeling good now, man. All right. Go to sister. Say bye, Matt. Bye, Matt. Bye, LJ. See you, buddy. All right. Close the door, Pop. Come close the door, please, baby. He's a cutie pie, man. Oh, yeah, that boy full of energy, man. He he getting it crunk out there. Yes, sir. So I want to see. So this is. So when you click on the link, this is what the Zoom training is. Mm -hmm. So you can just sign up. To... Yes, sir. You can just sign up. Yeah. Okay. That's useful, man. Oh yeah, I mean, Shoot, it's a I'm gonna little... sign up. I'm gonna sign up on there right now, man. Watch this. Hey, <laughs> appreciate you, man. Ah. Hey, feel good to get them little notifications up top, right, bro? It feel good, dog. Boom, done. Appreciate you, We're brother in. Matt. There you go, new subscriber. Cut there a concert barber studio. Yeah. Dope, dope. Appreciate you, man. There it is, man. Thank you for subscribing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're yes, in sir. there. Barber client relations, man. All right, man. Yeah. So shoot, man. What's what's next after the Zoom training? You just kind of want to continue, see if you can kind of get in the barber expo realm after that, maybe. Oh uh, man, so man, honestly, it's what whatever you know, whatever the Lord leads me to do, man. What whatever yeah. feels right. Um, that's, I that's do, all it is. Whatever feels right, man. Yeah, man. Whatever feels right. Um, I do definitely got like some goals that I pinned down. I want to start, you know, going to barber barber schools and you know just teaching, inspiring, and also working with the students. I so, just don't want to go over there and teach and leave. I really want to work with them. Yeah. So what is this uh, one month, one year? That's kind of part of it, oh, right? What you want to yeah. do? Well, you're a good listener, man. You, yes, sir. <laughs> you listen, man. You be on point. So, like, 2023, I had a tough year, bro. Yeah. Like, that was a bad – that was a, a hard year for me. I even put someone on Instagram talking about that, you know. Like, it was hard for me, man. And uh, I was stagnant in a lot of areas. Like, I put my hand to do a lot of things, but my mind was, was pretty cloudy for the most part, man. And – it seemed like the things I put my hand to do, it just wasn't working at all. I got resistance in every way. But um, this year is different. Like, I I went to therapy for the first time, you know, last year. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so. I still haven't popped my cherry there yet, there yet but I'm going to soon. Yeah, it's I different, bro. Got... It's definitely different, you know. Did you go online or in that. person? Huh? Did you go online or in person? I did it in person. Nice. Yeah, I That's did it in better. person, man. I had to drive like 35 minutes out, you know, to the spot and did like, you know, one hour sessions with them. Okay. 
So yeah, I had to, you know, get my mojo, get my mojo working. So that helped you formulate this new motivation, right? For the new year. Well, that and a lot of other things, man. Like cool. I really have yeah. to, you know, transform last year, man, and learn, learn myself, you know. So the one year, one month, it's me writing down all my goals in the month of January, things that, you know, I can see what I want to do within the year. Okay. I write it all down in, in January and I start on those tasks. Just getting the ball rolling. Yeah. Whether getting the ball rolling is, is making a call, um, you know, going to a certain location, talking to people. Um, this Zoom training, you know, this is one of the things I wrote down. Absolutely. And um, it was just for me to set a goal. Because, you know, in school, we had due dates. In a real right. life, we really don't have due dates. We got to create our own due dates. Yeah. So that's what I did. So everything I want to accomplish this year, I put it all in uh, January. And on those days, I do what I need to do to get the ball rolling. But I mean, it takes mindset. It takes self-development because we can always have plan or personal development. So we can always have plans. We can always write stuff down and do it. But if if my if our mind's not right, it's really not going to go nowhere. So right. I'm really working on just keeping my mind focused and staying away from things that's that's a stumbling block. <laughs> yeah, man. Do you play video games? Any? You got time for video games? <sighs> nah, bro. Last. Last game system I had was the Xbox 360. Okay. So that's what gets me, it gets in the way for me sometimes. It's mm -hmm. like I got an early morning. I'm up on my day off because I'm used to being up early. And I'm like, man, let me play a little Xbox. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I could be working on this podcast. I could be working out physically. Yeah. <laughs> I could be doing something. Everybody that, got one, though. Yeah. Everybody got that thing. And we got know. advice, right? That we all got advice. Bro. Back. Mm. Yeah, man. That, that's kind of what I want to work on more. Just taking care of myself physically better, which, I mean, since COVID, man, I mean, I I was the heaviest I've ever been since COVID. And oh, I'm trying too. to, yeah. So I was, me too. it's been a slow climb, but that, that's part, you know, I won't yeah. even call it a New Year's resolution because, I mean, it's, it's a fluctuation, <laughs> you know. Hey, bro, <laughs> I got fluctuated some, all last year, bro. Yeah, you got some good stretches and some bad stretches, but you just hope every good stretch you hit, you hit a new low, right? Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. But So how long have you been working on the Zoom um, class? Oh, um, when did I initially get the idea? Maybe some months ago. Two okay. and a half months ago. So do you want like a new subject since this time is barber client training? Do you want like to do something new on the next one? Yeah, I'm um I'm gonna do something new on the next one, but I think I really want to stick with this right here. Um barber client relations. I mean you could do ten on, the, on that. Huh? You could do like ten zooms on that yeah bro for sure so i think i really want that to be my thing because earlier we talked about like identity and everything mm -hmm. and uh trust me i don't struggle to find my identity as a teacher as a barber especially as a teacher as a so-called educator um i struggle to find my identity um i try to do over here i try to be like this barber over here i try to be like this barber over here trying to find you know what i thought i was supposed to be doing so yeah. I think I kind of find found my, you know, found what I'm supposed to be doing, man, with this whole situation because barber client relations, just in this Zoom, we're going from, you know, having a relationship with our clients to problem solving in a barbershop, dealing with infractions, um, dealing with falling behind and how to prevent that, remembering names. So this all inner workings in the barbershop. That's what we're talking about. So, I mean, that can go on for forever. I'm pumped, man. I, I, I need, you know, I could listen to some wisdom in those areas. So yeah, for sure, I'm, man. I'm, I'm excited, excited for bro. I got to I'm nervous, but excited. Yeah, man. It's good that you're nervous just because you care. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. it's going to be, yeah, just 
Just make sure you just get your points across, right? No matter how long it takes to get them out, just you know, get those points out. Yeah. And yeah, man. Like staying on time. That's a that's a tough thing. It's a it's a very good subject to talk about. And I'll take any tips I can get in that area because for sure. Those are some leaps and bounds I've, you know, made since I've started. Because I mean, talk about back to identity real fast. Like you've been in the same general area, right? Your whole life working as a barber yeah. me yeah. i've moved in three different states as a barber so it's like it kind of messes with your brain a little bit it kind of gives you this imposter syndrome yeah. because you're just like well i don't want to be what i was in that state so let me like mix in a little something else and <laughs> like 100 percent, yeah for sure yeah, man, but, my bad, because uh i turn my stuff on do not disturb for that reason but yeah, now now look, I just got seven shades wider for some reason. Yeah, it <laughs> always yeah. happens when I get illumination. A yeah, but yeah, man, I'm excited to hop in this class with you, and I'll hop in Bradford's right after because I think his is like the seventh, maybe. It's like yeah, bro, I after. think his is like yeah, he got a couple things going on. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, he's he's crushing. He's following through. That was one of his things. He's got all these thoughts, and now he's finally you know following through with them. I mean, we all have them. We all have goals. We all have ideas. You know, it's oh, hard to kind of follow through. So, right. yeah, I mean, you got to write them down. That, that's my that's my uh, gem I'll drop. Especially yeah, with this podcast, dude. I mean, just even on this episode, I had tons of ideas that I didn't even get to. But, like, I'll, I got to write it down right there and then because I will lose it. Like, <laughs> there's no right, doubt about right. it. Me too, bro. It'll leave my head quick. Oh, super quick, man. Quick, bro. I'm like, what the heck? Where did, you know, quick, yeah, bro. Man. So, my man, it, it was it was a pleasure, Lasana, having you on tonight, man. I, I thank you for making the time, taking the time away from the family on your day off, too, because you work tomorrow. So I get that. I get that stress of like, this is my last day off before I got work tomorrow. And yeah. With the family. So it was a pleasure, my man. Um, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. We'll spread this episode around a little bit and get your story out there because hell of a story man you hit you've had some ups and downs in your life and you you, you persevere man you came through and yeah man you, you gotta give yourself a lot of credit you know never be afraid to reflect on where you've been and how far you've come because i mean it's it's so important man and you know 100 percent, so, man. all right my man you, thanks for coming on take care lasana have a beautiful yes, night my man yes, sir. take you care too. Mm -hmm. Podcast. New episodes come out weekly on Sunday. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Apple Podcast and Spotify to be notified when new content is posted. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.